involving an NFL team using only Big 12 players. You've got your staples like Texas and Oklahoma. And this year, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah are joining the Big 12. So I'll try to sneak some players in from those teams too. First things first though, we've got to restart the entire NFL and draft our team. Coach Big 12 is ready. Let's begin. Keep in mind, this includes all players from our future draft classes. So if round one, pick one is from Michigan, we cannot draft him. It's a fantasy draft and our pick is round one, pick nine. 19. Honestly, the first guy that comes to mind for Cincinnati is the Kelsey brothers. Travis Kelsey's still in the league. He's a 99 overall tight end, but he's 33 years old. I don't know if this is a right call for our franchise. As much as I like Travis Kelsey, I'm taking a BYU Cougar, Fred Warner. Sorry, BYU fans, if you thought I was taking Zach Wilson, but we're starting out here with Fred Warner. Also, the Colts colors perfectly match BYU, so this worked out nicely. And that is exactly why I did not take Travis Kelsey, because he's still on the board in the second round. Now I'll pick up Travis Kelsey. It's still a reach, but we have a 99 overall Travis Kelsey, a 96 Fred Warner. Maybe I draft this team to win right now. We're gonna go to Oklahoma for an offensive lineman. I'm taking Trent Williams next. He is 35 and that is a reach too, but we've got really high overalls, so if that counts for anything. This is probably a little early to be taking Bijan Robinson, but I don't want to miss him. This is like my favorite Texas player. I gotta go Bijan here, and I really didn't reach that bad. We draft him at 110 10, his true value is 129, and I know he's going to develop into a monster. It's going to be tough to get Houston representation. I can think of like Ed Oliver and maybe Tank Dell, but we'll take Ed Oliver here. It's going to be a lot of reaches from here on out. I'm not going to lie. David Bakhtiari is still available, and he's Colorado, which is now technically Big 12. Ah, dude, this is honestly going to be very difficult. See, I like the Big 12 as a conference, but they're very top heavy. Like Texas and Oklahoma are consistently good, and the rest of these teams are like sometimes good and sometimes worthless. Brock Purdy was Iowa State, and I don't have a quarterback yet. I think I have to trade for Brock Purdy. Hey, this is honestly a really good pick from TCU. Trayvon Morig, this, darn it. I was hoping that wouldn't be a reach. We got a young safety. Not bad. I think we need DBs. We need corners. Finally, it's a 5'8 it's corner, but you know what? He's out of Houston. Marcus Jones. Dude, corners are going to be brutal on this team. I'm probably going to have to find him in the draft. This is no bueno. I do need another safety. I'm going to take Quandre Diggs. All right, that's the closest I've gone to not reaching recently, so I'll take it. I still need to get a player from Kansas, from Baylor, from Texas Tech. See, like, Mahomes is Texas Tech, but you only get Mahomes if you get round one pick one. I still need UCF and West Virginia. David Long, baby! David Long, run stopper, West Virginia. I may honestly move him to outside linebacker since we have Fred Warner. Depends what defense I run, though. Texas Tech! Hey, we're getting linebackers, boys! Jordan Brooks is Texas Tech! Thank you! You. All right, dude, if we could turn David Long and, and Jordan Brooks into like superstar linebackers, that would be awesome. We are actually unironically picking up Wandale Robinson. Dude, let's just make Wandale Robinson a superstar X Factor. Can we simply do that, please? I want a 5'8 superstar X Factor wide receiver, Wandale Robinson. I think that just leaves UCF, and I don't, I'm not certain that there's anyone available. So I'm either gonna trade for somebody or look for a UCF player in the draft. All right, let's take a look at our Big 12 roster before we make our big trades. So obviously Mac Jones cannot stay. We're gonna have to trade him. But Bijan Robinson, Texas. Darnell Mooney's gotta go. Fucking Wandale Robinson, Kentucky. Yeah, baby. Kinda wanna take Dell too, cause he's Houston. Travis Kelsey, Cincinnati. David Bakhtiari, Colorado. Trent Williams, Oklahoma. Defensively, we have Fred Warner, BYU. David Long, West Virginia. Jordan Brooks was Texas Tech. That's what he was. We got Quandre Diggs, Texas. Uh, Marcus Jones, Houston. Dude, this was so tough. I mean, I could have drafted better too, but this was tough. Got Ed Oliver, Houston. Oh, we didn't get Baylor. We did not get Baylor. We have to get a Baylor player. Baylor has some solid options. I mean, they got a lot of players in the league, but none of them are that good. I know our trade targets, boys. I know our trade targets. All right, the Packers got Brock Purdy. We got to get him. How do you convince a team to give you Brock Purdy for Mac Jones? You're not even Mac Jones. You're Marcus Jones. Well, you got to give him a lot of draft picks. Okay, Brock Purdy is not coming. What about Kyler Murray? I feel like we can revive his career. He's only a 77 overall star, so like... Shouldn't be too hard to trade for him. Already straight up Mac Jones for Kyler Murray. We're like halfway there. And he's Oklahoma. What about just Mac Jones in a second rounder? Honestly, I probably could have given him less. We got our quarterback. Dalen Petrie, our Baylor man. 24 years old, 80 overall start of. I want him. We can offer Marcus Epps and just see what this looks like straight up. Yeah. 
Not gonna happen. What about my round three? Not efficiently using these picks, but it's okay. We're gonna make this work. Without Brock Purdy or Brees Hall, though, I don't have, I have an Iowa State player. I am gonna trade Mooney for Tank Dell, though, because I really want Tank Dell. Darnell Mooney and a Hall of Picks for Tank Dell. All right, here's our final roster. I did want to trade for Gabe Davis, but we just made so many trades and we got to hold on to our draft picks. So we got Wandale Robinson, Tank Dell, then Bijan Robinson, Kyler Murray, Trent Williams, Bakhtiari, and Travis Kelsey up on the offense. I don't know how I feel about this team. We're going to have to do some serious rebuilding here. Now, defensively, I did put Jordan Brooks at right outside linebacker and David Long at left outside linebacker. They look pretty good there. They're both 25. They're star and Fred Warner is 26. So my linebackers are pretty amazing. D-line is not so great. Justin Houston's gonna retire immediately almost. Although we do have Quandre Diggs as someone we could trade. Let's actually see if we can get I kind of need a corner, actually. One thing that sucks, though, I'm not going to lie, is the corners. Just throughout the entire Big 12, there's just not a lot of corner talent. Oklahoma doesn't have almost anybody. I would love to get Sauce Gardner, but I don't think it's going to be possible. I honestly think we just got to run with this lineup and see what happens, and then hope that we can draft some studs. This is going to be ugly. I'm just going to be honest. This team has horrible scheme fits, too. Ugh. The number one goal, though, of course, I want Wandale Robinson to be a dog. My only Kentucky player, my 5'8 wide receiver. I want Juan Dale Robinson to be a superstar X Factor. I don't even know if that's how you say his name. Is that how you say his name? Okay. You know what? That's not the worst start to a season. We're four and three. Statistically, how are we playing? Kyler Murray is seventh in the NFL with 1,600 passing yards. He's 12 and four. Okay, dude, I honestly think we are going to revive Kyler's career. Um, Bijan is not off to the hottest start. 3.8 yards per carry is not great. Five touchdowns is okay at this point in the season. Okay, Khalil Shakir is taking over and and he's not even supposed to be on this team. So we're making a trade immediately. Tank Dell's doing salad, Travis Kelsey, and Wandale, Wandale, I need you, buddy. Wandale, we can't be having this shit, dude. I need you to be a dog. I might put Wandale at wide receiver one. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, Khalil Shakir, bro. You're getting 36 receptions for, no. You're getting traded this very second. I don't care what we gotta give up, dude. Always nice to see a Fred Warner upgrade, though. We'll take him from a 96 up to a 97, although morale is taking him down a little bit. He gets block shedding tackle and zone coverage. Nice work. Dude, look at the receiving leaders. This is so weird. It's Christian Kirk, Marvin Harrison Jr., Mike Williams. You could sim this game 1,000 times. You will never get those three again. That's crazy. What? And Marvin Harrison Jr. has one touchdown on 650 yards? There's Gabe Davis. Five years left on his contract? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trading for you, buddy. Good try, Khalil Shakir. Very good attempt, buddy. But you gotta go. All right, Khalil Shakir and next year's second rounder will get me Gabriel Davis, 85 overall. He's, he's technically our wide receiver one now, but it's going to make this season a little weird. Like, that's a pretty big trade in week eight. Here's, of course, Gabriel Davis and his new threads. And we got a UCF guy. Let's send him to the playoffs. I really don't think we make it. I'd be shocked, I guess, if we made it. Damn, dude. Okay, I said we weren't going to make the playoffs, but dude, we are four and three at midseason. We went on to win only two more games. We're 6-11 and 11 down there with the Jaguars. Texans went 12-5, and five, and the Titans went 10-7. and seven. Yikes. Now, we may have lost, but was it a bad season? That's the real question here. Kyler finished with 4,100 yards, 29-21. and 21. Yikes. His touchdown-interception ratio got horrible there at the end of the season. Bijan didn't even hit 1,000. Yikes. He did have 12 touchdowns, though, I guess. Receiving Kelsey at 1,008. He's basically, like, the only decent spot on this team. Tank Dell, 928-6. and six. Gabe Davis in only half a season. That's actually very impressive. And then Wandale Robinson, 721-4. and four. I will get you there, Wandale. You just wait, buddy. Defensively, Fred Warner was honestly a monster. We don't really have a lot of pass rush on this team. Milton Williams, Ed Oliver, Zayvon Collins, yikes. Yeah, dude, we've got some work to do. We've got TCU, BYU, West Virginia, Houston, and Texas all getting interceptions. Okay. Although I will say, my wide receivers, my quarterback, my halfback, all very young. So we've got some time. Since this is a fantasy draft, there is nobody available in free agency in this first year. So we'll go straight to the draft. Oh my God, look at this Super Bowl. That's actually a sick Super Bowl, dude. Bengals versus Vikings. Bengals win 38 236. That is an awesome Super Bowl. Now it's time for the NFL Draft. Since we kind of sucked, we're round one pick nine. This happens to work out pretty well for us. 
So pick two, three, and four we traded away. There's, oh shoot. I was just about to say there's two guys we can take in this draft, but one of them literally just got taken. That's Spencer Gray, right outside linebacker out of Colorado. Now obviously Luke Lamb, Kansas State. Wait, you are on the table. Kansas State is big 12. I technically could take Luke Lamb, but I don't need a quarterback. I'm not gonna lie though, he looks like a pretty damn good quarterback. Nah, I don't know though. His physicals are horrendous. So Kyle Hayes though, LaMichael Duckworth, Ken Hunt, Valentine, Earl David, all these guys are off the table. Now one thing this team really needs is an edge rusher. Here's Zach Hughes out of Texas Tech. He's 6'4", 313, which is very heavy. And he's a run stopper. He's got great strength, good acceleration. I just, I don't really have a choice. I'd have to trade my pick, which I don't hate, I guess. I think I'm gonna trade my pick away and try and just establish some capital because I was honestly gonna take Spencer Gray, but he's been taken. I'm trading this pick away. It's round one pick nine, so it's gotta be a valuable pick. I can get two first rounders from the Browns for this. In next year's draft and the year after that, I'm taking it. Not to mention a fourth and a fifth. That means that we're pretty much empty for this entire draft. But hey, I can only take big 12 players. Now I do wanna see if I can trade with one of these teams because there's Spencer Gray and there was another linebacker who I think was Oklahoma State. All right, let's look at the draft recap. See if anybody's worth it. Not to mention we have a trade offer for Andre Diggs. Somebody's offering Odunze. You're offering Romeo Odunze? He's Washington though, so we can't take him. Could get Darnell Mooney, Zay. None of these guys are shit. This is actually a very difficult rebuild. So CPU got me a whole lot of nothing. That's okay. It's very deep rounds, but okay. So Jimmy Cleveland is the Oklahoma State guy. He went fifth. He's a 74 overall. Spencer Gray is a 72 overall. Jimmy Cleveland's got 87 speed as a left outside linebacker, though. This guy's kind of a beast. I'm going to trade for Colorado's Spencer Gray. He's a power rusher. I might move him to, like, right end. And now I've got two first-round picks in the next few drafts, so I can offer one of these for him. So Spencer Gray for this round one next year. Okay, this, the trade logic is honestly broken because you just used a first-round pick on a linebacker, and then you're going to trade him for a first-round pick two years from now. It just doesn't make any sense. But, hey, I got Spencer Gray, so... That actually was so galaxy brain. I kind of feel like I just cheated the system though. Cause I traded my pick for two firsts from the Browns. And now I just traded one of those picks for a linebacker that I couldn't even acquire in this draft. So whatever, I guess. I also, I'm also quickly realizing how bad of a pick Trent Williams and Travis Kelsey was. Um, because we didn't win anything in this first year, Trent Williams is already retired. Bakhtiari is probably on the fence and so is Kelsey. So like Bijan and Kyler, Gabe Davis, Tank Dell, I think those guys are gonna have to kind of save me here because those were really bad round one and round two picks. I should have gotten like young studs, dude. Damn. I should have gone Sauce Gardner in the round one, although I don't think he was available. Ah, I should have gone with the quarterback. I should have, ah. Yep, we've dug ourselves a hole. It's time to dig out. Season two, let's head to mid-season and, and see what's up with this squad. All right, it's looking kind of similar to last season. We're three and three midway through. Debo Samuel, Mike Williams, and Amon Ra St. Brown on the Chiefs lead the league. The number one passer in the NFL is who? I think this is literally a Seth O'Neill for the Jets. He's 16 and six. This guy's a monster. Second, I think, was Caleb Williams. All right, Bijan's at 446 and four. That's not so great. We've only played six games, though. Tank Dell's doing great. Wandale's up there, baby. 304 for Wandale. Fred Warner's still doing his thing. And um, Kyler looks okay. 11 and six. <sighs> oh, dude, this, this might end up being a nine year rebuild. We got to figure it out. 10 and seven. We're, we're playing the Chiefs in the wild card. Not the team you want to see in the wild card, but oh my God, Kyler. Kyler Murray. Dude, a massive second half of the season. That was a complete reverse of what he did last time. So Jordan Love is 34-9, leads the league. But Kyler Murray, 37 and 17. It's probably too many interceptions to be MVP. Dude, look at the top five quarterbacks. This is so weird. Jordan Love, Kyler Murray, Jaden Daniels, Kenny Pickett, Caleb Williams. Then it's Seth O'Neill. Kind of fell off a cliff a little bit. Where the fuck is Patrick Mahomes? Is he not on a team? Okay, this is how you know Madden Sim is just so bad. Patrick Mahomes is in the bottom five for quarterback passing yards just because he has Tennessee Titans off. Down here also is CJ Stroud on Arizona Cardinals. Although I will say I'm a little disappointed. I feel like Bijan should be doing a little bit more. Uh, uh, 1110 is still a really good season for a running back, but I don't know. I feel like Madden Sim does a bad job of emulating this too because it feels like every running back goes for over a thousand. Take down with a thousand and eleven. That's a huge season for him. 
1,007 for Kelsey. Gabe Davis had almost 1,009. And dude, I'm sorry, Wandale. I'm failing you, Wandale. I am, dude. Fred Warner, another great season. Look at the rookie. Spencer Gray. I don't know that that's going to be defensive rookie of the year, but I did move him to right end. He gets six sacks in his debut season and 13 TFLs. It's a great season. I don't think it's enough for what we're looking for though. And then right at the top is Houston's at Oliver. So we got Houston and Colorado along with um, along with BYU, Baylor, Jalen Petrie. And that's five interceptions out of Fred Warner. Two out of Jalen Petrie. We get one out of Trayvon Morig and one out of Quandre Diggs. Taking a look at the MVP award. Looks like Jordan Love's probably gonna get it. Kyler Murray comes in seventh. It's just exciting to see him on there because that first season of his was not good. And then AFC Defensive Rookie of the Year is Spencer Gray. He gets a dev trade upgrade just for being the AFCs, which is awesome. So he doesn't even need to win it for the entire league. He'll get the dev trade upgrade anyway. Well, I guess we have a wild card playoff here against the Kansas City Chiefs. Their top three players are Amon St. Brown, Saquon Barkley, and Aiden Hutchinson. They just built the Lions. We got Fred Warner, Travis Kelsey, and Bijan Robinson. Kyler Murray. Oh, they have Caleb Williams. Wait, this team is going to be horrifying. They have Caleb Williams, Amon Ra, Hutch, and Barkley. This team's actually OP. They're going to get so much better too. And it's Chiefs playbooks. Oh, that's bad. All right, I'm going to fair sim this. And we do start out with seven points. They do the same. They're going to get another seven here. We're going to respond with nothing. 21 to seven. Yikes. Looks like our first playoff run is... Wow, we can't get in the damn end zone. Wait a minute. No, we really can't get in the end zone. Yikes. 21 to seven. Chiefs defense absolutely bottled us. And wait a minute. If you look at that, we had three... Superstars on defense. Last time I checked, we only had one, and that was Fred Warner. So that is two superstar dev traits we have right there. I think one of our linebackers got a dev trade upgrade. And this will be the final play of the game here. Chiefs are not messing around. It is the Chiefs. We're going to have to get through the Chiefs gauntlet at some point if we want to win the Super Bowl. Whether it's the wild card or the divisional or the championship, they're always going to be there. So got to find a way, boys. Hey, we made the playoffs. I'm excited, but obviously we're not ready enough. Kyler did not have a great game. 18 for 28, 181 and a touchdown. Bijan was very ineffective on the ground. Eight for 22. Well, I guess I don't feel bad now. The Chiefs beat the Giants in the Super Bowl. Devin White gets MVP. And Defensive Rookie of the Year is Emmanuel Joyner. So it's not Spencer Gray, but he should still get the Dev Trade upgrade regardless. We do have a ton of cap space. So we'll take a look at free agency, but I'm telling you guys, when you fantasy draft, it's just not very talented. Stonehouse is Colorado State. Ooh, Garrett Bowles is Utah. I guess I can move him to right tackle or something. That's if he signs. I don't know that he wants to play for us. So we re-signed Jalen Petrie, who is now superstar dev. This was a scary one. I didn't think we were going to get him to re-sign, but he did. I had to throw a bag at him. And Garrett Bowles also signs out of Utah. So building the O-line and re-signing our stud Baylor guy. This takes us to the draft where we have two first round picks. Time for the NFL draft. We have round one pick two. Oh my God. The Browns must have been absolutely horrendous. I don't know that I can use this pick effectively. This is such a good pick. Okay, there's a use. UCF quarterback, Ron Lewis, I technically could draft him to trade him. His intangibles aren't good. He's got really good accuracies. There's a Texas QB, James Bone, whose physicals are okay. His elite strength. I'm gonna trade down. I just don't need this good of a pick. I know who I want though, so I'm gonna trade down in this draft. I need a 2025 later pick and then just a bunch of capital. I like the second, third, fourth, and seventh, and then I get pick 12. Pick 12 should get me the player I want. So let's sim up to our pick. Okay, so the player I want is an Oklahoma corner. I'm really hoping he is still available. I mean, the UCF quarterback is still available, so I technically I could take him, but no. Let's build the O-line. I'm in piss. I'm in fucking piss. Oh, I hate this rebuild. This is so hard. I goofed it, though. I thought, dude, my corner was projected to go th round one pick 30. I thought for sure he'd be available. Oh, wait, he is still available. Oh, my God. He's still available at round one pick 22. This is the guy. I missed him. Steve Bingham, Oklahoma. He really doesn't look that good. He does have elite acceleration. But honestly, I just need a corner so badly. So badly. And he went to Oklahoma. So Steve Bingham, hidden dev, 92 speed, 95 excel, 6-1 corner. I needed this so bad. Yes, we finally have a corner from the Big 12. Let's go. Steve Bingham. Talk to me, Steve. Now I've got round two, pick five. Damn, that trade down ended up being galaxy brain on accident. Honestly, I can get another corner. Keon Davidson, this guy looks like shit. I'm gonna be straight up. Like, this is a whiff, but like... I. I at least I have a corner. Like, I have no corners on this roster, so we're gonna take 
Keon Davidson out of TCU. Beggars cannot be choosers, right? Here's a TCU tight end, and quite frankly, Travis Kelsey's gonna retire. So Rakeem Bryan, 82 speed, 87 excel, also a normal dev. Whatever, buddy, whatever. Draft recap. Okay, so Whittington was ass, but oh, oh shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not only is Bingham a 77 overall corner, but my CPU, oh wait, no, McMichael. My CPU drafted a 74 corner, but I have to literally pray that they're actually in the Big 12. Ohio State. Oh my God, they drafted a dog though. They drafted a dog in the sixth round. We got a Maryland wide receiver we can't use either, but okay, so Whittington, Bingham, Davidson is absolute dog shit. Brian is dog shit. Damn. And if we look around the whole league, yeah, there were some studs in this draft class though. There's an 83 free safety, an 81 D tackle. And I had round one pick two. Round one pick one was a Washington corner. A lot of good D tackles in this draft. All right, the year three roster. Kelsey is still here. We got Bowles. We got Whittington. We got Bakhtiari. Gabe Davis and Tank Dell are progressing, but no dev traits. Bijan is a 91. And then I know that we have, oh, shh, Jesus, what? Wait, what? Jordan Brooks and David Long regressed, but Trayvon Morig went X Factor? How did you go X Factor? Jalen Petrie is a superstar. My safeties are nuts. We still have Fred Warner. Marcus Jones, there's Bingham. And then Spencer Gray is star dev. So Spencer Gray did not get a dev trade upgrade for, damn. I, I really thought he was going to get a dev trade upgrade, but he did not. All right, boys, we are slowly but surely getting better. We've made some good draft picks and some good trades. Kind of just making up for our mistakes in our uh, fantasy draft. So, hey, year three, let's see what we can do. Taking this one all the way to the playoffs. Okay, well, everyone, welcome to our absolute worst season by far. <laughs> Four and 13. <sighs> this team is so inconsistent. Kyler goes 22 and 11. Uh, Bijan, 11, 25, and 10. The receiving stats can't be good. Kelsey, yikes, dude. This is a bad year for everybody. We'll be lucky if we get out of this without everybody regressing. Fred Warner still had a really good season with three interceptions. Marcus Jones out of Houston had four. Steve Bingham had one. Spencer Gray got two sacks, and that's it. Dude, yikes. Colts fans just don't know what to think right now, and I don't blame them. We do have 84 mil in cap. I'm praying that a really solid Big 12 player just freed up in free agency, but we'll see. Big shocker, the Chiefs beat the Cowboys. The Chiefs beat the Giants here. And then this was the sixth Super Bowl, 38 to 36. Oh, that Chiefs team is horrifying. Yeah, there's nobody in free agency. Nobody that we can use. Okay, well, we're dog shit, so we're gonna have another really good pick. Okay, just kidding. Four and 13 is round one pick nine less than me. And the Iowa State right tackle just got taken. No! I'm gonna cry. There's a Baylor quarterback, Evan Lowry. Dude, is it time that we draft a quarterback and trade Kyler? Is this the second coming of RG3? He has elite strength, everything else kind of sucks. Mm. We're not taking him, we could take the Texas middle linebacker or the Oklahoma right end. There's actually like good options in this draft. Dude, we gotta do something drastic. This is so aggressive, but this team fucking sucks. We have to do it. I'm going for Evan Lowry. Baylor quarterback hidden dev! I'm so sorry, Kyler Murray. But we have to, right? Like, we have to. All right, round two, pick two. Oklahoma State offensive lineman, I'll take it. My interior O-line is so shit. So, hey, he's hidden dev. Let's move Deion Miner over to, um, probably guard or center, Oklahoma State. And I'm gonna take Rashawn Mickens, a Texas D tackle who is hidden dev. Let's go. 91 strength, 83 excel, 74 speed. Very good draft. Three hidden devs, all big 12. Draft recap, this is big. Oh my God, we got so many studs. Okay, Lowry's a 73, meh. But he could win offensive rookie of the year, replace Kyler, we trade Kyler, get what we can out of him. And then Evan Lowry takes his franchise over. We got Oklahoma State, left tackle, Texas D tackle. And oh my God, the CPU drafted me a 74 overall. Kansas State, middle linebacker, which is big 12, and he's hidden dev. This is the year it all changes, boys. This is the year it all changes. Let's go. Oh, that's so massive. What a fucking auto pick, dude. All right, let's take a look at the whole class. There's 183, 179, and then it's all 76. This was actually a dog shit class. So the fact that we did that with this class, pretty awesome. Damn, but that wide receiver was West Virginia. He was round one pick two, though. We couldn't get him. I think we try to extract some value out of Travis Kelsey while he still has some. And let's get a different Cincinnati guy. I think you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to be cheap. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're getting really fucking weird around here. I traded my Cincinnati tight end for a Cincinnati corner. So Kelsey on the last legs of his career and a first and second rounder will give me a 26-year-old Sauce Gardner with two years left on his contract. And we haven't even traded Kyler yet. Kyler's an 82 overall, but he's only normal dev. Like, he literally regressed. He's not going to be worth that much. The Titans just lost Mahomes. I'm going to see if I can get this superstar left guard out of Texas for Kyler Murray. This is such a weird trade, and we're not quite there. Has there ever in real life been a left guard traded for a quarterback? This whole rebuild is just something else, man. The Big 12's got the better of me. All right, Paul Brown, welcome. Well, one thing I can tell you for certain is your Indianapolis Colts, your Big 12 rebuild looks a whole lot different. We still got Davis, Tank Dell, and Wandale. Still got Bijan, but now it's Evan. Evan Lowry, the Baylor prospect, hidden dev, 6'4 quarterback with really good throw power and solid accuracies. And despite his complexion, he's not that fast. I mean, come on. Am I right, fellas? Defensively, we've got Morig Petrie, Marcus Jones' is superstar, and we just added Sauce Gardner and Bingham. All of a sudden, it's a full flip. Oh, and Spencer Gray got a dev trade upgrade. And Mickens is, oh my God, dude, literally so much is going on right now. An unbelievable amount of things is going on right now. Our defense is now insane, but our offense is a little scary. We need a huge season out of Evan Lowry. If we can get a huge season out of Evan Lowry, we win Offensive Rookie of the Year. This team turns around, and guess what? We were 4-13 and 13 last season. This is the easiest schedule we're ever going to get. We just need a big one here. We need a big one, boys. Rookie quarterback just put together a 9-8 and eight season. It's ugly. It is. But it's somehow the playoffs, even though we're virtually at the bottom of the AFC South. And that means we probably had a pretty good season. 81 offense, 91 defense. Talk to me. First ever rebuild from two states. I wasn't able to finish this in Arizona, so let's clean it up now. Ugh, dude. This has been a tough rebuild, but a quick recap. So the year is 2026, and Evan Lowry in his rookie season goes 3,600 yards, 24 and 12. Is that enough for Offensive Rookie of the Year? Bijan had an amazing season, 1,513, and we distributed the ball really well, but nobody got over 1,000. Tank Dell, Noah Gray, Gabe Davis, and Wandale Robinson. I've still failed you, Wandale. And I'm sorry. Looks like the Sauce Gardner trade was not a bad call at all. Four interceptions for him, three for Fred Warner, and two for Marcus Jones. So that's Cincinnati, BYU, and Houston repping right there. Ed Oliver had 14 sacks. That's crazy. Damn. Rashawn Mickens, the rookie, had seven and a half. Our defense was very strong. Spencer Gray got four, and Jalen Petrie even got two and a half. Damn. Caleb Williams is about to win MVP with the Kansas City Chiefs, but that's not what's important to us. Evan Lowry will win AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year, maybe for the whole league, and Rashawn Mickens is going to win it for the AFC Defensive Rookie of the Year. Now it's just up to the guys in the NFC. In the NFC, it's Reggie Hicks and Terrence Holiday. I guess we'll see. We've got a tough wild card against the Texans. I don't see us getting through this, so I'm not going to watch it. But if I'm pleasantly surprised, no, I'm not. Take a loss there to the Texans. It was our first season with Evan Lowry, though, and he's already a 78 overall, and he's star dev, so we'll be able to get him in shape. So Evan Lowry does win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but Reggie Hicks wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. So we didn't get both, but we still, it's still an awesome season for us. Uh, Seahawks win the Super Bowl, beating Caleb Williams' Chiefs. And guess who's MVP? It's Lamar Jackson. Dude, chill out. Oh, just kidding. I lied. I'm getting this rebuild mixed up with a different rebuild. Lamar Jackson is really good in rebuilds. That's all I'm going to say. All right, headed into 2027, there are definitely some big changes. David Bakhtiari retires. So now our offensive line's not looking as good as it used to. And I did finally find a trade for a Big 12 tight end. I traded my first round in that last draft for Chase Hamilton. We had no picks in the 2026 draft. But I did get Chase Hamilton for the first rounder. He's an Oklahoma tight end superstar. Three years in the league, so he's really young, and we definitely needed a big tight end threat. Also, he's got 91 speed, 91 catching, 88 excel. It's a really solid tight end. Lowry's up to a superstar dev. Bijan's up to an X-Factor, but Gabe Davis, Tank Dell, still sitting at star, and um, I even lost Wandale Robinson. So I completely failed this whole rebuild. Sue me. Defense looks absolutely spectacular, though. I think we can make a really, really, really strong push this season. Also, not going to lie, I signed Jonathan Allen in free agency. For some reason, I thought he was Oklahoma. He's not Oklahoma. He's Alabama. So we need to trade him. 
I wouldn't hate more offense. Like, I wouldn't hate getting a wide receiver for him. Or, yeah, I don't know. Finally found a wide receiver, too. So in exchange for Jonathan Allen, we got Lindsey Medlock. He's 5'9", 188 pounds, 25 years old, and he's only an 84 overall. So this kind of looked like a bad trade. And granted, I had to get a big 12 guy, but... Take a look at his ratings. 98 speed. This is the light skin Tyreek Hill. Lindsey Medlock. He's even got like a light skin name. 95 agility. So his route runnings aren't great. His catching stats aren't great. But we get this dude some reps. He's going to be an absolute tank. And I don't think we have a single Arizona State player on this team. So very excited to have him. I think this could be a very promising season. Lowry's got superstar. Bijan's X Factor. We've got Hamilton and Medlock now. I'm just concerned about our window, you know? It's not easy in these streets. That's all I'll say. All right, Big 12 Rebuild. Wish me luck. We're sim to the playoffs. Ooh, wait a minute, boys. Do we really have a chance? We're an 89 overall. We're a 92 defense, 87 offense. We just went 12 and 5. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We've been here a lot. We just have not fully executed. Lowry just had a nasty season, though. 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. We gave him a new tight end and a new wide receiver, and Bijan's an X-Factor, so he should have succeeded well, and he did. Bijan, 1,300 and 14 touchdowns. The backup, Bruce Norwood, got 7 touchdowns. I don't like that. Give those 7 to Bijan. He's got 21. Tank Dell went for 1,012. Hamilton, 935 and 7. And Lindsey Medlock, our little Tyree Kill, 923 and 2. I think eventually if we get him into like Tank Dell reps, like put him at slot, he's going to be a very scary wide receiver. And defensively, it's all Fred Warner. Fred Warner ended up being an amazing pick. He's been the cornerstone of the defense every season. We get 11 sacks out of Ed Oliver, who continues to play great. Eight out of Spencer Gray. And Mickens gets four and a half. Another, ooh, just kidding. I thought that was going to be Sauce Gardner. Four interceptions for Steve Bingham out of Oklahoma. Four for Petrie out of Baylor. Three for Marcus Jones out of Houston. Two for Fred Warner out of BYU. And one for Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. One for Morig out of TCU. The Big 12 defense is legit, man. My Big 12 offense, I've kind of had to build through the draft. Well, we were at the wild card last year at 9-8. and eight. We lost to the Houston Texans, and we smacked the sh We smacked the shit out of them. 35-14 to 14 against the Jets. Caleb Williams and the Chiefs have advanced, and they're taking on the Bengals in the divisional. We're taking on the Buffalo Bills. On the other side of the bracket, it's the Seahawks-Eagles, Cowboys-Falcons. No surprises here. The Chiefs and the Cowboys are still in it. If I win here, worst-case scenario is the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to sim through this game too, and that's, I was literally just about to say, the worst thing I can see, it's Kansas City on my screen. They're so hard to beat. They got a 92 offense, a 92 defense, they're a 92 overall. We got a 93 defense, we're an 89 overall. Let's take a look at their roster before we watch this game. Chiefs have Aminra, Aiden Hutchinson, they literally just built the Lions. Then they got Caleb Williams, Witherspoon, DJ Landry, Josh Downs. This can be a scary team. So our top three players are Sauce Gardner, Fred Warner, Bijan Robinson. There's our Aminra, Hutch, Caleb Williams. Let's see what we can do here. Huge game for us, the AFC Championship. I don't want to have any input on this. I'm assuming to the end of this game. Kansas City's on the board first, and hopefully not second. They're also on the board second. We finally punch our way into the end zone and get another three. It's 17 to 14, 17 to 21. I think I just saw, yup, yup. That was an interception sauce. Gardner, Casey's got two turnovers. We have zero and they're still beating us. There's a handoff to Bijan who breaks an ankle. He just busted somebody's ankle. 13 rushes, 73 yards and a touchdown. It's second and goal. I'd give that shit to Bijan again, bro. Just give it right back to him. I do see big Aiden Hutchinson over there. It's an RPO! Oh, it's Lindsey Medlock, our little Tyree kill, but I don't know if anybody else saw what I saw. That ball popped out. Let's watch this back. Quick RPO throw. I guess he got his mitts on it, but the second he catches it, that puppy's out. That is going to cause some controversy, but Evan Lowry in his second year is throwing a great game here against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's 24 to 21, four minutes left in the fourth quarter. It's weird not seeing Mahomes as a chief, but Caleb Williams, I'm a little scared of that too. They've got 399 overalls and two of them are out here on offense right now. That's Caleb Williams and Aminra St. Brown. We got a ton of abilities on this defense though. Look at this. We've got eight different players with at least superstar. 
We've done an insane job of bulking this defense up. Let's see if it pays off. Caleb Williams does connect with Amonra right there. We got Spencer Gray. We got Ed Oliver and Mickens on that D-line. We got Fred Warner, Petrie, Sauce Gardner, Trayvon Morig in the skies. Oh! Oh! Yo! Spencer Gray just hopped an offensive tackle, and we get a zone knockout. We could close this game out here. That's going to be a punt. And hopefully, Lindsey Medlock is our punt returner. I forgot to sub my punt returners. But he's back there anyway because he's fast as shit. It's got to be him. Well, apparently all that speed didn't give him very good vision. We got Trent Richardson back there running directly into a defender. Let's see what Evan Lowry's got. He throws open to Chase Hamilton. Oh my God, we're already in excellent shoe clock territory. The worst thing we could do here is not burn any clock and then kick a field goal. Bijan's got his X factor. Oh my God, please give the ball to Bijan. Slip screen. What did I just watch? Why would you ever run that? You just stopped the clock. They just stopped the clock with that slip screen. I was saying this is the worst case scenario. We got to make a conversion here. Lowry checks down to Bijan. Powers forward for five yards. I don't like this. If we settle for a field goal here, we're not in that good of a position. A six-point lead. Third and five. Huge conversion coming up. Lowry, clean pocket. Throws to fucking no man's land. You had two open dudes. And we're settling for a field goal. That is the worst thing we could have done there. That's a fake! Holy shit, it's a fake! And we... You're psycho! What are we running? That back slip screen into a fake field goal. I can't believe what I'm watching. It is 24 to... Tw I can respect the balls, though. I'm gonna be honest. Big 12 inches is showing all 12 right now. Caleb Williams sitting in the pocket. Delivers to Rishi Rice. I don't know who that is. Williams. I have no idea. That, that might be Jamison Williams. They have been stealing all the Lions players on this Chiefs roster. So maybe that is Jamison Williams. Fred Warner's got his X Factor lit up. There's two. Dude, if they score the touchdown, this will go down as one of the worst play calls in playoff history. There's a rifle. Wow, what a pass. Second and three. The clock is ticking. They could send it to OT with the field goal, and they have all three timeouts. Obviously, a touchdown puts us in a very scary position, but... I've seen crazier shit in Sim. I'll say that. We need some more of that edge pressure, man. We were, ooh, 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 a big heave. Great defense. Trayvon Morig's having absolutely none of that Hail Mary nonsense. Now second and 10. That was a risky shot they just took. I mean, they were marching down the field and they go and take that heave right there. Here is a play action rifle short, caught by Aminra, instantly tackled. It's third and four. They're in no huddle. This could be big. We stop him right here. We force a long field goal. Come on, we need some pressure. <gasps> Fred Warner! And that is why Fred Warner is getting two or three interceptions every season. He just made the play of the game. Okay, technically it's not over. If we don't get a first down, we will have to punt. They have all three timeouts. That's Casey's third turnover to our none. But shit, I mean, we're calling fake field goals. We're turning over for, for ourselves. Second and nine, Bijan. I mean, they're stacking the box. They know we're running. Bijan's gonna march this one out to third and two. We could ice the game. This has got to be a stretch, right? Or we go right at the middle. They've got everybody down in that box. Look at this defense. It's a pass. And it's caught. That was so risky. Dude, my coach is a psycho. Big 12 inches is insane. I cannot believe the play calls he's making. Oh, we're going to the bowl. I can't believe we're going to the bowl this year. I thought it'd be at least another year, maybe two, before we were Super Bowl ready, but we just took down the juggernaut. Beating the Kansas City Chiefs is always one of the hardest tasks, and this Kansas City Chiefs team had Caleb Williams, Aiden Hutchinson, Amon St. Brown. They were horrifying. I honestly think that there's no way whoever we play in the Super Bowl is better than that team. That was the best team in the league. That's my thought anyway. We're going to have to find out. Yeah, Lowry played an amazing game, but look at this. It was honestly Caleb Williams who sold the game. He had three interceptions. Despite that, they almost won. Bijan was very ineffective on the ground. Three yards per carry, but he did get the end zone. And defensively, Sauce Gardner had two interceptions. Fred Warner had one. The Sauce Gardner trade was huge. I cannot believe we kicked a fake field goal. All right, boys. Time to see what the other side of this bracket looks like. My guess... Is Dallas Cowboys. It's always the st stupid Cowboys and the Chiefs. But hey, hey, Colts versus Eagles. They're only an 87 overall, so this must be a nasty team. They must have some secret sauce. The Eagles have Tyreek Hill, Chris Jones. Okay, so they're just building the Chiefs. Kyle Pitts, Daniil Hunter, Drake Greenlaw. 
Anthony Richardson, now a 90 overall. Amani Hooker, Isaiah Simmons. I'm not going to lie. This team on paper is nowhere near as good as the team we just played. So hopefully this Super Bowl is as easy as I'm hoping it's going to be. All right, boys, we have done a Big 12 rebuild. We're finally in the big game. Here's what your team is looking like. Chase Hamilton, our young Oklahoma tight end, is a superstar X-Factor. Evan Lowry, our Baylor draft pick, only in his second year. He's looking super solid, 90 overall superstar. B. John Robinson out of Texas, of course, having a spectacular season. He is just, dude, he's so good in French. That's one of my favorite players right here. On defense, guys, this was honestly so unintentional. I had no idea that we could get Ed Oliver this good. But Ed Oliver out of Houston is now a superstar X-Factor D-tackle. This was like a throwaway pick. He's amazing. He is also one overall away from getting inside stuff, which would be so good. But honestly, this Ed Oliver is crazy. So much better than I ever imagined. Very happy about it. Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati has been amazing. So has Steve Bingham, our draft pick. Marcus Jones, Petrie. Trayvon Moore have been amazing. And honestly, probably our best defensive player consistently every single season is Fred Warner out of BYU. I'm kind of shocked that this is our Super Bowl team, but I don't know. Let's go see how this Super Bowl goes. This Super Bowl being played in Raymond James Stadium and Philly does start out with seven. We only get three, they get 14. We get a safety? It's 21 to 12 right now. I do not like this score. 24 to 12, 24, 19. Oh, this is horrifying. In the Super Bowl, it's 24 to 19. Eagles have the ball. That's Anthony Richardson with, I actually didn't check who he's got in the backfield. It's Jonathan Brooks. Okay. That's pretty cool backfield, I'm not gonna lie. Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Brooks. There's another handoff. They're handing off the ball a lot, but Fred Warner's all over it, third and one. They're trying to milk this clock, I understand. But let's see if we can get a huge stop here. Come on, boys, it's gonna be one more handoff, no? Or is this a short pass? It's a short pass. Anthony Richardson's got a wide open man. Luckily, Philly was forced to kick a field goal. That makes it 27 to 19. So it is still technically a one possession game. But if we get in this end zone, we've still, oh no, Lowry's flushed out. Even if we get in the end zone, we've still got to get the two point conversion. Second and 10, there's AR, not AR. Ooh, it's EL, it's Evan Lowry, sorry. I'm looking at the Colts and they have Anthony Richardson and it just confused the hell out of me. That's Evan Lowry on our team just delivered a laser to the corner, which was hauled in. And dude, this is gonna be a massive two point conversion here. See if we can tie up the Super Bowl. Gotta get in the end zone first. Gotta get in the end zone first. That's a wide open Chase Hamilton. They don't make it much easier than that. Chase Hamilton's in the end zone. But can we get the biggest two point conversion of our lives? Oh, this is so big. Oh, this is so big. Two-point conversion. Colts versus Eagles. Super Bowl down by two. Evan Lowry drops back. Checks down to Bijan with four Eagles over there. Bold. Bold check down, buddy. Yikes. The game is not over. There's still a two-minute warning and three timeouts, but we're in a very scary spot right now. We have to either force a turnover or get that ball back on a punt, get ourselves in field goal range and win on a field goal, potentially. That would be wild. There's the first play, it's a handoff. Contained so well, that defense was spectacular. And this is the two minute warning coming up. If they run the ball one more time, they're almost forced to pass it on that third and long. And if we can stop that pass, we'll be in business. This almost looks like a pass. So they got a bunch out to the right, second and 11. It is a handoff and we got bodies there, but he breaks a tackle. It's third and two. Oh no. We have to stuff this, boys. This is going to be a run. You know it. Get some bodies up there. Why are we playing so deep with the safeties? Fred Warner! Fred Warner! Stops him on fourth and one. The Eagles are going to punt. We've got a timeout, and all we got to get is field goal range. Wait a minute. Lindsey Medlock handles the punt, gets bodied. Oh, my God. John's got 102 rushing yards, 34 receiving, and Evan Lowry now has the biggest possession of his life. In the Super Bowl, down by two points. If you're wondering how we're down by two, we missed a two-point conversion, but we did get a safety. We got a safety earlier today. We did just get sacked by Chris Jones, though. We know he's a menace. It's second and 17, and we are still checking down. Evan Lowry, can I help you, buddy? What is with the checkdowns? This is the bowl. Heave that bitch. Third and 13, you better chuck that. Yeah, boy! Chase Hamilton down the sideline. He's still in bounds. We may use our timeout. No, no huddle. 35, 34.
We're almost under 30 seconds. There's another pass to the middle. Caught. I don't even know who caught that ball. I think that's Tank Dell. Maybe it's Gabriel Davis. There's 15 seconds left. We haven't used our timeout. Don't do anything stupid. What are you doing? Okay. Okay, threw it away. Holy shit, he just gave me an aneurysm. I thought that was gonna be a jump ball. Guys, just hand it off and call the timeout and kick, kick the game winner. You have Evan McPherson. There's a handoff, Bijan Robinson. He'll take it for five yards. Please, for the love of God, call the timeout. Thank you. Okay, Sim pisses me off. Sometimes Sim will mess this up, so. Oh, come on, Big 12 inches. Don't you call a fake field goal right now. It's 27 to 25 in the Super Bowl. Evan McPherson is trotting out for the biggest kick of his life. And he gets iced. Philly is gonna ice him as he trots out. Philly calls a timeout. Raymond James Stadium is rocking right now for the Super Bowl. A 39 yard field goal. Evan McPherson is butter! He drills it! Oh my God, would you get lit? Talk about lack of immersion. You just hit the game winning field goal in the Super Bowl. Nobody gives a shit. Two seconds left, wait, wait, please, for love of God, do not return this. Please, 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 swarm, swarm, swarm. Yes! It's over! And the Big 12 rebuild, the Indianapolis Colts win the Super Bowl by a single point. Fred Warner, you earned it, buddy. Fred Warner, you earned it. Honestly, I don't know who Super Bowl MVP is gonna be. Evan Lowry did not play that well. I think that's Bijan right there. Evan Lowry, I think he had two interceptions. Let's see who they hoist up. Whoever they hoist up is usually, is that Bijan or is that Lowry? Am I a casual? Yes, you're damn right I am. Oh, that was Bijan. Yo, I think we just got a Bijan Robinson Super Bowl MVP. Evan Lowry, I love you, buddy. You can cradle that all you want. You're scaring me out there. Although that pass to Chase Hamilton was big clutch. Big clutch. What an insane Super Bowl. Evan Lowry, 21 for 33, two touchdowns and an interception is an okay game. He got outplayed though by Anthony Richardson. 18 for 26, 217, two touchdowns, no interceptions. But take a look at the Super Bowl MVP. Bijan, nine for 105. One big touchdown and four broken tackles. You're a monster, dude. Not only that, but Bijan was five for 62 through the air. So he just had, what, 160 some all purpose yards. Tank Dell. Did make a huge catch. Chase Hamilton had a huge catch. Then it was Quan Davis and Tyreek on the other side. And defensively, Steve Bingham. Really solid game there. Rashawn Mickens had one and a half sacks. Ed Oliver got home once. And there's only one interception in the entire game, and that was from Elante Taylor. 28 to 27. Let's go. One of the most beautiful things you can see right there, boys. 28 to 27. Bijan wins Super Bowl MVP. And we didn't get any other awards. The NFL MVP was Jaden Daniels on the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, let's see how this team does on autopilot. I'm gonna sim all the way to the Super Bowl. Let's see how we do this next season. Wow. Look at that, in our follow-up year, we go seven and 10. They don't even make the playoffs. And guess who's in the playoffs? Actually, guess who's in the Super Bowl? It's everybody's favorite. Can we, yeah, can we just, can we get rid of this, please? Could we add some diversity to playbooks like the real NFL? In fact, the real NFL, the Dallas Cowboys never make it to the Super Bowl. So I don't know how the hell you got them making it every year. Whatever. So overall, looking at this rebuild, I think one of the toughest parts, and you can kind of tell, was offensive line. There's really not a lot of good options. You really had to scrounge in those drafts to find anybody usable. And even then, you had to hope that they were hidden dev. So the offensive line's definitely ugly. We got pretty lucky on Chase Hamilton, and we developed him really well. Same with Evan Lowry. Without Evan Lowry, we were in a lot of trouble. Bijan was huge. There were a lot of good wide receiver options, and we made them work for sure. And defensively, we really stepped up to win that Super Bowl. Fred Warner was amazing, and Oliver developed like a stud. Sauce Gardner is obviously one of the best players in this entire game. Trayvon Morg, Jalen Petrie, Marcus Jones, Steve Bingham. Big 12 rebuild. It was not easy. It took me two states. It took me the state of Arizona and the state of Michigan to complete it. But we got her done. Hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.